Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up an isopod enclosure. I am starting by creating one of those bricks of coconut fiber. That's what I'm using as one part of my substrate. Here I'm just expanding it because you know when they come it's super duper dry and definitely requires a lot of water. Um, and once you've done that, you can mix the mixture. I use sand, activated carbon or like charcoal, um, sphagnum moss, and coconut like fiber. I think, or like the coconut blocks. And then you just want to mix that all together. I also mixed in some leaf litter because I find that that's really good to have in the substrate. Um, I think the only thing I would I would recommend is using a bit more of the ingredients than I did on camera. I didn't record all of it. Um, like you definitely want to have a much better mix. Like here you can see I'm mixing in more of the coconut fiber and I find that this just helps to make sure that it dries out a bit easier and there's variety in there so it doesn't become super compacted. Um, and here, because I am upgrading my isopod enclosure, I'm just going back in and adding the leaf litter, all the isopods, as you can see as I start putting stuff in, the isopods start coming out. I highly recommend having a, like a Reptile Rock dish in there because I've found that it's so nice to have one because you can basically, it prevents the food from molding. I have done isopod cultures where I don't have a Reptile Rock in or like a little reptile dish and I find that the fish food molds must much faster so I highly recommend that and <laughs> this was a very simple explanation on how to set up an isopod enclosure um just a few more guidelines before we go I think it's important to keep in mind that an isopod enclosure should be about six quarts in size if you really want them to do well for you um if you end up going a bit smaller in my it doesn't they don't usually thrive to the same extent they're found in very small spaces in nature but like <laughs> You can't really keep them in the cup that they were they were given to you in for their whole lives. It just doesn't work as well in my experience. Um, I also recommend that you have a substrate mix. And that's pretty much it. They're super easy pets to take care of. Obviously, this only goes over a small part of their husbandry with their enclosure. But I hope that that was helpful. Culture after it being in this container for about... Um, about a month now. Um, they're all doing so well. Um, I don't know if you can see, but I'm really filled it in with more leaves. I added more driftwood. This is their favorite one. This is another one. I add philodendron, extra philodendron leaves in from that, that plant whenever I get any that fall off or anything. Um, I added an area in a sphagnum moss here. Because I found that they really like to drink off of this, and especially when they're molting, they like to go in here. Uh, I think it's because all the hiding spaces, and they, uh, and also they might feel more secure or something. And I've noticed a lot of the babies really like to go in that area too. So I'd highly recommend having an area just of sphagnum moss that's very humid for them to go in. Um, and I also recommend having several things of driftwood for them to hide under. I also had an old washi tape um, thing in here. And they really like this, so I would recommend any form of cardboard that isn't dyed. Is really cool too. Um, this is my favorite piece of driftwood because the way that it's shaped lets them all go up underneath it. I could imagine this being really cool for like a snake too, because they could like slither through it because of the way that it's shaped. Uh, the cork bark's pretty good too. They really like that one. It was their favorite until I added the big one, and now that one's their favorite. Um, I have this dish. I just put a bunch of different types of fish food in there because I wanted to see what they would eat. It's just a very thin layer. It's not actually as... <laughs> it looks like there's a lot because it's completely full, but it, there's just a thin layer. So we have the fish food and the cuddle bone. And we got the extra plant pieces. And they like these leaves. <laughs> um, they use them to hide underneath. Like, look at that. Look at all the babies underneath there. Hopefully you can see that. It's not too dark. There's like 20 of them down there. They love hiding underneath the leaves, so leaves are definitely a must, and they also break them down. Um, yeah, really, the isopod enclosure has been going really well, and I wanted to share this to show that they really thrive in this type of setup. Um, I would definitely recommend a 6-quart bin of this size, because it <laughs> leaves so much space, and they are doing so well since I upgraded it into the year. Thank you everyone so much for watching. This has been my isopod enclosure.